Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. I'm in Washington, D.C. I'm at the Total Solutions Plus Tile meeting. I'm with Noah Chitty, the Director of Technical Services with Crossville. Noah, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Kemp. How are you? I'm good. A little background on you. You went to Clemson University and studied ceramics, and that led to you getting a job with the Tile Council of North America. You worked in their lab. That's when I met you. You left there after a while and went to Stone Peak, and now you've been at Crossville for, what, about four or five years? Yeah, five years in March. Okay. I wanted to talk to you today about a topic that's very interesting. We've written a few things about it in Floor Focus, but I think you're probably one of the industry experts on this topic of gauged porcelain and tile used to be called thin tile. Tell us real quickly why they changed the name. Well, the main reason that that we changed the name is when we went to write standards, we knew that the standards that we were going to write for the moment were going to be for the products that were on the market, that were still in the eighth inch to quarter inch range. But we saw the technologies that are making these products really expanding to be able to make thicker products. And we thought that if we were going to create a standard that could then be future proof, that we would need to also include possibly thicker products in the future. So the term thin couldn't really continue to apply if we were going to end up seeing half-inch or 2CM or 3CM products coming out of this that may need also standardization in the future. And gauged is the same way that other industries like wire and sheet metal are defined, right? Exactly. Something to denote that a a product is manufactured to a specific thickness and then can end up with a specific purpose based on that thickness. I did an interview yesterday with Bart Vedica, and we talked about these ANSI standards, and I was complimenting this industry for getting this done. To get an ANSI standard, you have to bring stakeholders in from everybody involved, right? Yeah, so the ANSI standard, the group that eventually you have to submit the standard to and get voted on is a 60-65 member committee called the ANSI A108 committee, and you have to get buy-in from that large group because every single negative, while it might not necessarily hold up the standard, has to be addressed, and you have to communicate you know, reasons why you may not find their uh, opinion useful. So if you're going to get past 65 people, you need to seek com- some consensus on the, on the front end of the project. Well, and I applaud that ability to achieve consensus. So you have to have a product standard before you can have an installation standard because you can't say how you put it in unless you say what it is first. So Tile Council and really the tile manufacturers that produce and sell these products got together to produce a product standard. And then about three years into that process, we knew it was going in the right direction. So at the same time, we started to work on an installation standard with a group of about 10 of us that represented tile manufacturers, setting material manufacturers, the architectural community and labor to try and draft the uh, installation standard. And then we ended up going to ballot at the same time for both of them. I should mention, since we're talking to you and you work for Crossville, that when you start thinking about these gauged products, there's basically two out there, two ways of making it out there. There's the laminum process and there's the SACME continuum process. And Crossville has an arrangement with laminum here in the United States, right? Correct, yeah. So laminum is made by the lamina process the, uh, produced from the System Corporation. And then System Corporation not only sells the equipment to other manufacturers, the lamina process equipment, um, but also produces through uh, you know a brand of its own the laminum product and Crossfield distributes laminum uh, as the exclusive supplier in the United States. So what was it about this product that required a separate standard from normal porcelain tile? So one of the things is, you know, when we look at a product that's this large, the installation standard we knew was going to require some different techniques in order to put it there. So not wholesale changes in what we do, you know, but a look at the best practices, a look at what different tools were going to have to be involved and the different practices that were going to go into it. And there were some also some things that we had to look at from a product standard standpoint. You know, you can't sample 10 pieces or randomly select. So we had to look at sampling plans. We had to look at measuring things like could you measure warpage, which we ended up not including because you had a tile that was, you know, flexible under its own weight, that kind of thing. So we really had to, took what we could use of traditional style tile standards, but also really looked at uh, what was different about these products and how we had to change things we had done in the past. So one of the questions, obviously, with us being floor focused that I'd like to ask you is, you've come up with this table, if you will, that defines the, the varying specifications for this product, and there are only certain products in the standard that can be used on the floor, correct? 
Well, so what the standard does is it, it has two tables. It has a table with the physical requirements if you're going to specify the product for floors, walls, or countertops. And that includes products in between 5.0 millimeters and 6.5. And then it has another table for products three about 3.5 millimeters to 4.9 if specified for walls and countertops. So it doesn't include what the physical requirements for a material would be less than 5 millimeters if you were going to put it on a floor. And then the installation standard is specifically for products that are covered by the product standard. So it means that while there may be manufacturers out there recommending a thinner than 5 millimeter product, um, they would need to proprietarily have the physical requirements if they were requested and, and, and their own installation instructions for those products. So it would be outside of the standard, a product less than 5 millimeters used on the floor, outside of the product standard, outside of the installation standard, uh, and the manufacturer would need to have that information. So to sum all that up, if you don't mind, what, what's the number for that standard? ANSI A137.3 is the product standard, and ANSI A108.19 is the installation standard. So but if you're going to abide by the industry standards and you plan to put it on the floor, it has to be ha- how thick? 5.0 millimeters. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now let's get more into the installation standard because this product, let's base it, it you, you can score and snap it. You know, you, there's certain types of adhesives that can be used. Uh, talk just real quickly about what's different about the installation standard versus standard tile. Well, the main thing is is that the, the pieces are in their full fo- formats are really large. So it's already harder to get coverage under a 12 by 24 than, say, a 8 by 8 or a 12 by 12. So we had to look at what tools and techniques were available to us, still using best practices for regular tile, but that would get us to the same endpoint of full coverage. So we had to look at specific trowels that worked to facilitate collapse of the ridges, not by a press and slide technique, but, but just by downward motion. We had to look at different tools like suction cut frames because the materials, you know, and you make anything thin enough and long enough, um, it, it can bend and flex. So, you know, suction cut frames that can give the material stabilization until it's installed. And even beyond that, the logistics of, you know, you need to pay attention to, can you put a 10-foot tile in an 8-foot elevator? So all those things that really were different, I would say, you know, 80, 90 percent of it is still best practices for installing tile. But there are some small tweaks to the procedure, like using a vibrating sand around the edges, lippage control systems if the pieces get large enough that really required some different things from what we've installed traditional tile techniques with. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's a different type of trial potentially. There's a different way of handling the product. Yesterday in your presentation you said to give it spine when you're moving it around. So there's uh, different things you got to learn. What are the training requirements for someone who's, say, certified to install this product? So in the ANSI A10819 standard, for the first time, we wrote a section on qualified labor. And that section on qualified labor uh, recognizes two or three things as to if it were written into the spec where you could find uh, a qualification. So it recognizes ACT, the ACT program, union and non-union together skill set testing for gauge porcelain tile. If somebody had that certification, that would qualify them to be qualified labor. And then the other option would be comprehensive training program from like a tile manufacturer, a setting material manufacturer that would have a program, do the training, make sure they saw the tools, the techniques are covered, now the standards are covered, and then could if issue a certificate of completion for that training that would then also, uh, you know, if it were put in the specification, show them as qualified labor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, are we tying in warranties to this type of standard? There's nothing in the standard about warranties. Just like normal tile, mainly you have a a warranty from the tile manufacturer that the product is free of defects. You have a warranty from the setting material manufacturer uh, about their products. So usually system warranties uh, and that kind of information, usually from the setting material manufacturer, is who you're going to look to to uh, help you develop the correct system. What the standard does is give you some some rules about what kind of substrates it should go on and, and that type of information. And then depending on the specific application, um, you help build an appropriate system that can perform. Now, if you're an architect and designer and you want to specify this product, then you want to write into your spec that it be manufactured to the ANSI spec 
and installed to the ANSI spec, right? Exactly. That's that's the ideal thing about why the specifications were written, because before the specifications, you really just turned to individual manufacturers to say what the product could do, what its physical requirements were, and how you installed it. Now, by specifying a product standard, um, it gives you a minimum you know, performance criteria, as any standard does, and it gives you an ANSI A10819 gives you an installation standard where you know what the outcome's going to be if you if you install it to those practices. Okay, Noah, great job. You are an expert at this, and I appreciate you spending time with our listeners. Again, I've been talking to Noah Chitty, the Director of Technical Services at Crossell, and you've been listening to Kemp Har and FloorDaily.net.